Well, let's integrate some more stuff. Let's integrate natural logs. So let's think back, let's think, think back to derivative taking. Remember with derivative taking, if you had the absolute value, not, not, not to say that all logs had the absolute value, but if they did, whether they did or didn't, remember that the derivative of ln of x or the absolute value of x was u prime over u, so I got 1 over x. Okay, well, so that means if I integrate 1 over x, notice, guys, when you get this thought, let me write that as a power. Do you see that if I were to write 1 over x as x to the negative 1 and tried to do the power rule, what would happen? I get x to the negative 1. I increase the power by 1, so that's x to the 0 dividing by the new power is 0. Okay, see, that's a problem. So the power rule doesn't work when your power is negative 1. When that happens, you need to think of ln because that's what it's going to be. So when you get 1 over x, you're going to get the integral of 1 over x, and that power rule doesn't work. You're going to get at natural log, and here's where the absolute value comes in. With integration, it's not going to show up in the question, but you have to put it in the answer. Okay? You have to put that absolute value in the answer. So here's the deal. Notice what I really have when I have 1 over x. What I have in the bottom, if that's u, what is in the top? The derivative of u. So remember how we... we we memorized that this derivative is u prime over u. Okay, so if I integrate u prime over u, then I get the natural log. And I'll be honest, with quotients, this is one of the first things I look for. I look for saying, is it going to be a natural log? So with example one, um, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this two ways. Because again, do we have do we like the fast way? Do we like the true u sub way? I'm not going to do all the problems that way, but this first one I will. For you fast way people, okay, here's what you're looking at. You're looking at this and saying to myself, I look at what I have in the denominator. And a lot of times you you kind of do a, a kind of a hybrid of them both and I know I'm just rewriting that, you would say, well, if this is a log, u is what's the whole denominator, 5x plus 2. Now, what would du be? du would be 5dx. So do you have that in the numerator? And in fact, you do, because notice that the, the way this is written, you have 5dx. I could have written this, because I've seen it typed a couple ways. Y'all, the dx could be on top. They could write it like this as well. So it's the same thing. These are being multiplied. So you have the 5dx on top. So you have du over u, or in other words, u prime. So when you see this u prime, that's like du. So you have du over u. And you would say, well, gosh, that's just that natural log of the absolute value of this denominator, which is 5x plus 2 plus c, and that problem is done. Now, if you do the actual true u sub, I mean, I kind of said it when you're thinking about this one. Well, you have the integral. This is u. 5dx is du. So how does... In other words, u prime over u integrate, that's ln, absolute value of u plus c, and your last step is for you to fill in what that u is, and you have it like that. So I'm going to kind of stick with the, the hybrid method where I, I do this, but then I kind of do it the fast way. Again, if you like the true u sub, you're welcome to do that. Let's look at example two. In example two, 
I would go, okay, I see a quotient. I am going to look to see if I could do it, if it's going to be an LN question. So how do I make that determination? Let U be the entire denominator. What would DU be? DU would be 8x dx. Now look, do you have the variables that you need in the numerator? Well, what variables would you need? You would need an x dx. Do you have that? Yep, you have an x dx. So the only thing you're missing is a constant. So can we, it's going to be an ln, yeah. And I can do it quickly by what do I need in the numerator? Well, I wish it had an 8. And if it had an 8, I have to put a 1 8 because, again, I have to multiply by 1. So now this whole thing is my poofy cloud. What do I have? I have du over u. I have u prime over u. How does that integrate? I integrate to ln absolute value of your u, which will be your denominator, plus c. I certainly can't forget the 1 8 that I had out there, and that is my final answer. Let's look at example three. Now in example three, I certainly hope you go, well, it's not going to be a natural log of x because I've got a heck of a lot more in the numerator. This is not the derivative of this. So it's not going to be that. What do I do? And that's why integration is so hard because yeah, you can't just go, oh, I see a quotient, so automatically I'm going to do the quotient rule. There are several steps that the next steps that you could do and by practicing you learn oh in this one I need to do this and in this one I need to do this what is the big clue with this guy well the big clue with this guy is when you have a monomial down here you need to just divide it out or in other words think of that problem as being x squared over x plus 9 over x dx in other words, undo the common denominator. So what am I really integrating? I'm really integrating, well, x to squared divided by x is 1, x to the first, plus 9 over x dx. Now remember, I'm, I usually don't write these out separately, but I want to make sure that you understand something. What I'm really integrating is I do these separately. I have, I have x dx plus the integral of 9 over x dx. Well, this integration is pretty self-explanatory. That's x to the first. So increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and I would get that. Plus, what about 9 over x? What, what is that going to integrate to? Well, remember, this 9 is in the problem. So what I could do is go, you know what? Let me just pop that 9 out here and change that to a 1. Wouldn't that be true? I didn't put in the 9. The 9 was in the problem. So if I'm just moving him, I just move him. So what would that integrate to? 9 ln of absolute value of x. Because what is the integral of 1 over x? Well, that's u prime over u. And so this would be my answer. Let's keep going. You try number four. However, however your method is, I want you to try, actually, numbers four and five. We got to get these together. Okay. So stop the video and try to do four and five. Okay, if I were going to attack this problem, I would go, well, let me check to see if it's uh, uh, going to be an ln. The u would be the denominator, x squared plus 2x. So du would be 2x plus 2 dx. 
Now let's look at our numerator. Interesting. Hmm. Let's look at our numerator. Do we have a version of that? Oh, I hope you see it. Couldn't I write this as this? Oh, so I go, sweet. I can do this the fast way. I have x plus 1, and I can put that dx on the top. I have x squared plus 2x in the denominator. Well, what do I, what do I need? Well, what I need next to dx, I've got the variables. The only thing I'm missing is a 2. So if I put a 2 here and I put a 1 half here, what am I really integrating? Friends, what I'm really integrating is u prime over u. That's what that is. So how does it integrate? It integrates to the 1 half stays, natural log of the absolute value of u, which is going to be the denominator, plus c, and there's my answer. Now number five, when I look at number five, okay, look, here's what I want you to, oh, I, I hope that, I know this is so hard, but it's so important for you to start kind of see, seeing and reading. Is this going to be a natural log problem? Well, remember with an ln, your u is the entire denominator. So if my u was the entire denominator, du, oh good gosh, I'd have 3x squared plus 1 squared times 2x. Well, I have, do I have all of that? Do I have all those variables in the top? Heck no. I don't have enough of that. So I'm like, well, that's not going to be how I do it. This is not going to be an ln problem. So what is this one? Well, your u is not the entire denominator. Oh, this is one like we did the other day. Let your u be your power. I have a power that's not to the negative 1, but to the negative 3. So this is a power rule problem. My du would be 2x dx. And this I have in the numerator. So again, and I know right now you're like, oh my gosh, friends, you, you see it when you start practicing it and you start doing it. And that's what you have to do is put in the time to do that. So with this problem, I am going to, I still need a 2, but again, it's a power rule problem. I'm increasing the power by 1, x squared plus 1 to the negative 2, divide by the new power, I have the 1 half plus c, and so my final answer, again, without uh, negative exponents, I have x squared plus 1 squared plus c, and sorry, that negative kind of got lost there, okay, wherever you put that negative, I have that as my final answer. So please know, just because this is on the notes of natural logs, y'all, I have to kind of uh, for lack of a better word, integrate other problems that we have, have done throughout because you've got to start figuring out, okay, is this an LN? Is this a power? Is this, do I need to just divide? What do I need to do when I do this problem? So that's part of your, your skills in learning this. All right, let's do a, a definite integration. Well, with definite integration, we'll kind of incorporate what we did yesterday. So even though um, I could do it two different ways, I'm going to go ahead and, and practice. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and get the, I'll get the number, and then we'll, we'll talk. So remember, don't make it, if the, if the ultimate goal is getting the number, then just do your thing. U is x cubed plus 1 du would be 3x squared dx. Oh, goodness. Look what I have in the numerator. x squared dx. So if I wanted to do this problem, I would have x squared dx over x cubed plus 1. What would I need? I would need a 3. I would need a 1 third. 
So my integration gives me one third natural log absolute value of x cubed plus one. And I am going to evaluate that from zero to two. So I have one third. That would be the natural log of what? If I plugged in two right there, so two cubed is eight, eight plus one is nine. They would probably drop the absolute value because absolute value of nine is nine. Minus natural log of what? When I plug in zero, that would be the natural log of one. Now at this point, you can kind of do a couple things. You can either do log properties or know that what is the natural log of one? The natural log of one is zero, so that goes away. So I have one third natural log of nine. Now, unfortunately, it perfectly wonderful answer right there. But unfortunately, remember how with trig, I'm like, y'all, if you have trig, if it's multiple choice, you, you always have to think of trig identities because they could like trig identity it to death. Well, with logs, you've got to think log properties. Do you remember the log property that said if you have a number in front, you can put as a coefficient, uh, sorry, if you have a number in front, you can put as an exponent on that argument. So technically speaking, I could also write this as the natural log of nine to the one third, and they could write the answer like this. Again, am I saying that's a better answer? Yeah, if that's what's on multiple choice, then yes. Is this the better answer? If that's what's on multiple choice, then yes. Now let's, let's do one other thing. If this problem had not asked you to get the number, if they'd ask you to write an equivalent integral in terms of u, what would that be? Well, u would have the integral. Let's look down here. When we did that, we would end up with one third times the integral of du over u, correct? because this right here is du and of course that is u but remember this will be an answer choice 100 percent that would be an answer choice that is an incorrect answer choice because if they ask you to write an equivalent integral what must i remember i have to remember to change my bounds so if i'm going from i have two and zero then I have to remember that if I plug in two, that would give me nine. If I plug in zero, that would give me one. And so my answer, if they ask me to write an equivalent integral, would be that right there. And remember, I wrote du over u. You know, of course, that that and this are the same thing. Okay, one last one. I'll say this is a stinker. I'm going to give you a second to think about it. Half of the time, it's just a matter of uh, kind of playing with it a little bit and going, okay, let me, let me think. I mean, gosh, if, if you looked at the whole denominator is your u, well, that derivative would be something crazy with x's and phew, that's certainly more than I have on top. So my u certainly can't be that whole denominator. So you start doing other things. You start trying other, other ideas. What if, what if u was just this? Write me what du would be. What is the derivative of ln of x? Well, that's u prime over u. That would be one over x dx. Hmm. Do you see it? Do you see it? Because let's think about this. If I was clever in writing this, this x right here, couldn't I write this problem as 1 over x? I'll do it in steps so you follow me. Couldn't I write it? I mean, isn't that true that it's the same thing? And in the same way, I could write this 1 over x if I wanted to write it as a 
complex fraction, couldn't I write it like this? Wouldn't that be the same thing? And so you're like, oh, well, look what I have. Do I have, if this is my u, do I have his derivative in the numerator? And I do. So how would that integrate? It integrates to the natural log of the absolute value of the denominator, which is ln of x plus c, and that is my answer. Now, there's one thing I want to say uh, that didn't come up in the notes, but I want you just to, to, to know about it. Let's say real quickly, and I'll just erase this for a second, that you did this integral. The integral of x squared plus 1, I'm going to make it very simple, uh, you have this. So you're like, oh, well, x squared plus 1, what's the derivative if your u is x squared plus 1? du is 2x dx. Well, the derivative of the denominator is in the numerator, so this is just going to be the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 1 plus c, correct? What you might see on the answer key is this. And I don't want you to go, oh my gosh, wait, my teacher said this. Y'all, if the absolute values aren't doing anything, they oftentimes drop them. Now, if it's free response and you put them on there, it's not that it's incorrect. But let's think about it. If I have x squared plus 1, the whole point of an absolute value is to change what is negative to be positive, correct? Well, if what's inside the absolute value is always positive anyway, do you really, are, are those absolute values really doing anything? And that answer is, of course, no. So if ever you see a, an answer that didn't have the absolute value, the reason is because what's inside there is positive anyway. X squared plus 1 can never be negative, so the absolute values are kind of irrelevant. And I might write the answer this way. Again, for the response, I'd give you credit for that. But on multiple choice, if they don't have the absolute values, I wanted you to know why those weren't there. And, and understand um, why you get that. So just know that and practice those integrations. All right, peace out.